Well, what's up, YouTube? All right, so I'm gonna let y'all in on a little of uh, my personal business. I don't like to talk about my personal business on here, but I'm starting to understand that, like, sometimes you gotta open yourself up for people's judgment or lack thereof in order for them to actually see and understand how you apply certain spiritual principles. Now, I'm going up and I'm about to pass this cemetery, so when y'all see me doing this around my head, that's because I'm passing the cemetery and I don't want any spirits hopping up on my head. So, when you're driving past cemeteries, you want to make sure that you, you know, making movement around your head because that's where they will attach if they can get to you, a lot of them spirits have not transitioned. A lot of them are still walking the earth and they looking for a target. You know what I'm saying? So you make sure you do because that confuses the spirit and it, it's movement. So they can't really attach to you if they try. All right. Now, so I don't really like talking about my personal business, especially my marriage, because people got ideologies about marriage that is just they just they, they just fucked up. And people got ideologies about relationships. It's just fucked up. Like they, they always up in some fairy tale ass shit. And it's it's not like that. Like all the time your marriage is not gonna be perfect. All the time you're not gonna be sitting up in a uh a, a, a situation where the motherfucker is just everything you dream of. Sometimes that motherfucker is going to piss you off. Sometimes you're going to piss that motherfucker off. And that's just how it go. Because you got two people, okay, with their own minds, their own ideologies, their own way of viewing things that have, uh, it's a big ass cemetery, y'all, uh, come together to put together a life, okay? So, like, if you can fall out with your homegirls or your homeboys, trust and believe, you can fall out with the person you married to. The difference is y'all vow to work, walk through it together. Okay? So, the story I'm about to tell y'all is not one of these happy ass, ooh, my marriage is perfect ass stories. It is not. It is a story that is a reality. And it is a story that also helps me to articulate some of my spiritual principles and how I put them into practice, okay? So let's get started. So me and my husband and got to this place where we need help, okay? Um, communicating with each other, getting back to a place where things are once again peaceful and copacetic, all right? So background history, I mean, neither one of us came from home that were particularly uh, great for expressing how you get along in marriage, all right? So, for us to get married one young, we got married when we was barely 20 years old, um, to suffer through um, death of a child you know we've gone through um having to move in with parents because of financial issues and all of that and not having a, a good example of what it is to actually be married i'm actually quite proud of us because we're looking at 17 years of marriage come around February. So I'm actually quite proud of us and the work that we have done. But we have gotten to a point where we are unable to navigate this situation with each other. All right? The communication is not right. Um, in some um, aspects or at some points, the communication is just outright fucking terrible. Like we can both be fucking terrible. I already, y'all already know I can be terrible because y'all know I just, I, I, I'ma just say it. Especially when it didn't got to the point where I done tried to, you know, 
non-verbally communicate that you know this shit ain't right and i don't feel like i'm listening to and then i pop the fuck off and all the unadulterated unfiltered ass truth come out y'all already know i'm hell so and we in this place that is not exactly conducive as far as the way we communicate with each other so we done had to go get some help or at least he had to go get some help because i wasn't gonna do it and i wasn't gonna do it because i feel like i've been actively trying to um get these things to do better and he had a mentality that as long as he made sure everything was all good as far as finances go and the things that the material needs that needs to be met go then he's doing his job and i've been feeling like what the fuck you doing and what you proud of is expected so um i ain't got no accolades for that which is kind of harsh but i mean for me i don't feel like my personal needs have been met you know i hadn't felt like i mattered or important on an emotional level so you know we got two different perspectives going on and we are not communicating it very well at this time so um this last time we got into it it was pretty bad and so we went so he went and got a marriage counselor or whatever but today was very interesting because when initially asked what days you know what i'm saying uh i wanted to go I picked, uh, we could choose between Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I picked Wednesdays. The reason why I pick Wednesdays is because Wednesday is a Mercury's day. And Mercury deals with commerce, contracts, contracts, marriage, contract, contracts, um, um, what's the other one? Marriage contracts oh communication duh day to day travel stuff like that so i picked it because it was communication right and not only was it it's communication it's the first spiritual chakra um in the chakra system at least the main chakra system so, marriage is also a spiritual connection, and we're going to marriage counselor. One of the things is, when it comes to communicating absolute, raw truth of an issue, I don't think he gives me that, and I find it very frustrating, which, in turn, leads to us having, uh, mm, I'm going to say about 50% or more of the arguments that we have, because I'm like, I'm trying to get to the root of a problem here so it can be fixed, and you have as communicating that's not working i'm frustrated you're pissing me off now i can't be friendly because i'm angry you know all this type of stuff so that's why i pick wednesdays well today we get ready well i i pull up because you know he was already at work so i had to meet him at the marriage council today we go to the marriage counselor and basically the counselor pretty much ended our counseling so we can go to another counselor so apparently this counselor is supposed to teach us how to uh how, how to act okay <laughs> this counselor told us we they, 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 he said well i don't know because what you describing here sounds like it possibly could be maybe abuse Okay, and what we was discussing is his tone when he get angry, you know? And I understand that people yell, and I think this is another place where we have a miscommunication. I understand that people get into arguments, they may yell, and they may scream. But at the same time, I do believe that there is a level of self-control that every adult human should have okay 
And see, when we get into it and he fucking loses control of himself, he just gets to acting a damn fool. Just just doing all kind of dumb shit. Just do dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just sitting there watching this fool in a rage. Like, hey, so like, when you gonna come back to reality? Hello? Can you cut it out? And you know, it's like he not even on earth no more. It's like, when I go into trance and shit be going on on the earth and I don't I don't uh I don't pay no attention to it because I'm somewhere else. That is almost how he is when he gets angry. And I'm like, at some point you gotta gain some control over yourself because that is absolutely ridiculous. Okay? And so I was communicating this to the counselor. He was like, oh, raises a red flag. Is it active abuse going on? And I said, really, at the end of the day, I don't really feel like it's active abuse. I feel like if it is not taken care of, then it could be. It could turn into such. I said, so, I don't know. That's going to depend upon him because it is not me doing that to him. It's him doing it to me. And I don't understand somebody that cannot control themselves or have no control over themselves. That's just weird to me. And so initially he says, my husband says, oh, I'll stop straight like that. And then less than 30 seconds later, he's like, oh, no, we need to go to the other people. And so, now we got to go to the other counselor that's going to teach us how to act. So, you know what? It's okay, though, because, you know what I'm saying? They might help me further develop this more tactful way of speaking or whatever the hell, which, you know, I don't necessarily, at this point, given from where I come from, because I've gone through two transitions, and I'm working on the third, but I'm kind of comfortable where I am now. And I don't necessarily see a real big issue with it, but I am open because I can't understand how in some, some situations, you know what I'm saying, me just flat out blunt saying what I feel to somebody may not be the best course of action. You know, I do understand that. So, I mean, um, you know, maybe they can help me speed along this um, gainful need for tax. But um, that's where we are now. The interesting thing a part of, 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 about this was, it is, like I said, a Mercury day. And I think I already explained to y'all what Mercury was. So, when I pull into the parking lot and I'm getting ready to get out and go into the session, my, uh, my little clock on my phone says Saturn time. And I was like, uh oh. Uh oh. So, Saturn is that father energy of the zodiac. It's like the, it's the disciplinarian of the zodiac. Okay. Um, Saturn don't play no games. Okay. Saturn, that's why, like, a lot of times when people go through their Saturn returns, that's when Saturn comes back to the same place it was in when you was born. It's like you see a lot of people go through hell during that time because Saturn is the great disciplining, discipliner, and Saturn is also the great rewarder. So depending on what you have done within that time for Saturn to get back to you, that is what is going to reflect in your life at that period. So, when you see these people going through absolute hell, and you see these people excelling like a motherfucker, that is because that is the result of the work that they done put in uh, during that Saturn period. Okay? So, I already know right now, we in a state of um, we in a state of uh, disarray in our marriage. So I already know Saturn ain't about to bring nothing good up in this mug right now. So I'm like, oh, all right. And I'll be doggone if at the end of the thing we ain't end up having to go somewhere else only to come back later. 
So we got to go see these other people. And then after we see these other people, we got to go back to marriage counseling. Welcome to your work. Saturn is also a taskmaster. Saturn wants this work done. Saturn wants their work done properly. Saturn is a taskmaster. So I was like, yo, we got this Mercury combined with this Saturn time. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man is right. But you know what? It all works out to your benefit. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people have this stigma about, I'm not getting in that line. Y'all find some damn town. A lot of people have this stigma or this fear about going to see counselors and therapists. Let me tell you something. Going to see a counselor or a therapist is no different than seeing a spiritual practitioner, okay? They are there to listen to you and help you work through your problems that provide insight. Things that you miss, things that you cannot see. Like, I was able to understand, <coughs> and it was actually through today's session, why I feel this void and he can't understand why whatever he do to him seems like it's not good enough when it's not the case it's not that it's not good enough it's that i'm missing some things but for him it's is the object is to keep everything together and to keep everything intact and not rock the boat and float under the radar whereas for me i understand that there are gonna be changes it's gonna be things that i do he don't like it's gonna be things that um i do he don't like and vice versa you know what i'm saying i think i just was redundant but um i understand that there are gonna be a lot of uncomfortable conversations you know what i'm saying but from his line of thought he's trying to uh, avoid the uncomfortable conversations and to me i'm like that don't help you know one other thing that does is frustrate me which is not going to end up being a productive conversation and like what another problem i have with him is look if you did the shit you did the shit Admit you did the shit. Don't be sitting up here lying and not telling the truth and all that type of shit because you think it's going to escalate the situation. Hell, I already know you done the shit. It is what the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? But his thing is he just want to stay under the radar. And that don't do nothing but piss me off even further. You know what I'm saying? So, you know... Now, I guess we go into a place where we learn strategies as to how to deal with our frustrations when we in a heated place, I guess. That is where we going, and that's fine. You know what I'm saying? I kind of look forward to it. Um, i slightly disappointed that we had to go there, but then at the same time, I do understand that we didn't really have no examples. And I also understand that, you know what I'm saying, we um, we married really early. And there's been a lot of changes and transitions that have gone on between his individual self, my individual self, and then the not dynamic of the relationship as a whole. And Clearly, there was some work that needed to be done at different points that was not done. Be it on both of our parts or one of the parts or whatever, you know. And so, I can swallow that disappointment and just get over it and go ahead and get the tools that we need in order to be successful in this marriage because, I mean... Honestly, it was a lot of stuff that we didn't get. A lot of stuff that we did not know. A lot of stuff that we didn't get to learn. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, 
better late than never. But it was just really interesting to me how, I mean, and that's, that's like part of fortune telling. You see different things and you put them together and you able to see the future. Just that thing saying, Saturn's hour. I was like, yo. And then I went in still not thinking it was going to be nothing. And went in and found out, no, bitch, you got more work to do. Yeah, you thought you were just going to come in here and talk to these people? Oh, no. <laughs> you going to talk to these motherfuckers, too. And, you know, it's cool, though. I look forward to the journey or whatever. But, um, I just wanted to share that with y'all because, like, it's stuff like that that I pay attention to. It, it, it's stuff that I see in day-to-day -day life. It could be the color of this car that's in front of me right now. You know what I'm saying? If you are, um, if you have clear audience, you know, a lot of times my spirits will tell me, pay attention to this thing. And I mean, it might not mean nothing to me. And I'll be like, all right, duly noted. And then later on, I'll see something else or hear something else, smell something, and you put those things together and, you know, that's how you come out with a, a sign of clarity. Um, so, I just thought that was really interesting the way that they happened this morning. And, um, yeah. I just wanted to share that with y'all. So, um, y'all stay dark and lovely while spreading your love and lights. And, um, I'll see y'all next video. Alright? Peace.